Alright, back again. Today we're going to be installing something a little unusual on our Fujitsu Lifebook P1610 here today. Now, when you see, well, you probably can already see it, but if you don't see what it is, we're going to be installing Windows Vista Home Basic on this Fujitsu Lifebook P1610. And I know what you're all saying. Ben! What the hell do you think you're doing? Well, I'll tell you why I'm installing Windows Vista number one and number two, why the Home Basic Edition. I'm installing Windows Vista because I want to see how it runs on an Intel Core Solo because I remember when Windows Vista first came out back in 2006, a lot of people said you really needed at least for a mobile, pro a mobile computer at least an Intel Core Solo to run it, which was about the newest mobile processor you could get at the time. Because even a Pentium M wouldn't run it well. So they were saying you wanted to have a Core Duo or Core Solo, Core Duo preferred. But I wanted to see how Windows Vista would run on a Core Solo, and I wanted to see if 512 megabytes of RAM well, this computer has one gigabyte of RAM, but all the other editions of Windows Vista don't run well on one gigabyte of RAM, even though that's the recommended from Microsoft. Um, but they only, but they say that for Home Basic here, 512 megabytes of RAM is what you really should be running it on. So, I was going to put that to the test and see if Home Basic will run any better on a computer with one gigabyte of RAM than any of the other editions. So let's go ahead and start out here and get right down to it. So we've got our copy of Windows Vista Home Basic with no service packs. And the way you can tell if it has any service packs or not is look at the disk. Um, if it says focus, zoom in a little bit here. If it says copyright 2006, you have no service packs. If it's 2007, it's either service pack 1 or 2. And then, of course, I've got my handy... Lenovo external optical drive here, which I've used to install Windows on many other computers without optical drives, and of course the Lifebook itself. And if this fails, I've made a clonezilla image of the original XP installation, so we can always revert back to it. Alright, the Vista disk is in the drive. Let's go ahead and boot off of the CD-ROM drive. We have our typical press any key to boot from CD or DVD message here and Windows is loading files as if you haven't seen this enough when installing Windows 7 but it goes it does that in Vista too now I don't have my tripod with me today so I'll try to hold the camera as steady as possible or I could make you seasick Yep, the good old classic Windows Vista boot bar. Very bland compared to the Windows XP one. The other way you can tell if this is no service packs or service pack one or later is you'll see this crystal bean background if you're installing Vista with no service packs. If you're installing Vista with service pack one, you'll see a different background. And also, note the 2006 copyright date down there, indicating we have no service packs. Okay, so let's go ahead and click Next. Ah, I, I love seeing this screen, this Windows Vista Install Now screen. It's one of my favorite parts of installing Windows Vista. Okay, product key time. Well, I would give you... I know how much you all would love my Windows Vista Home Basic product key there, but... Since Windows Vista is not yet an abandoned or unsupported operating system, I can't show the key, so I'll go ahead and cut this out and be right back. While you're waiting for the product key to be validated, look at a, this nice photo of my cat. Alright, so we went ahead and it's now saying to accept the EULA, so we'll go ahead and agree to it. I'm trying to see where the mouse cursor is through the viewfinder here. And you'll notice that you can't do a direct upgrade. Well, I couldn't do it anyways, but if you want to do a direct upgrade, you have to start the installation from within Windows. So we'll do a clean install. I can't do a direct upgrade because 
Uh, if we do, if we try, we're going because we're, we would be going from a professional edition of Windows to a home edition. So, and that's not supported. So we have to do a clean install in this case. But we'll go ahead and format our drive here, and then we'll begin the upgrade process, which will probably take a cup. Will probably take close to an hour, but we'll see. Just one other thing to note. If you don't enter a product key in Windows Vista's installation, it basically turns your disk into a universal disk regardless of which edition you have. So, if you click if you choose not to enter a product key, you can select which edition you want to install, which is convenient. I wish they did that in Windows 7. But without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so we're back. It's been about 30 minutes since we started the installation. But when you're installing Windows Vista, you'll have to remember Billy Mays' uh, catchphrase. But wait, there's more. Because there's always more to a Windows installation. So now we're just waiting here for the uh, first run wizard to come up. Might even get to see the Vista orb. Oh, it looks like it found the uh, video driver, which is good. Alright, type a username. I'll just go ahead and type in Ben. Uh, type a password, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'll select my favorite photo, which is the dog photo. It's one of my, f one of my favorite photos in Vista. And I think that PC name's already in use, so let me just go ahead and set the camera down here while I type. We'll call this Lifebook S dash PC. I'll just use the default wallpaper. Yes, I want to use recommended settings. I know you guys probably can't see. I am in Eastern Time. Yeah, 4.30. Yep, it is 4.30. Thank you. Okay. And this is where the, sa the old adage, but wait, there's more, holds true because when installing Windows Vista, there's one more step to the Windows setup process. By the way, this is the background you see in Windows 7's, or Windows Vista's Service Pack 1 and later initial setup. So, just uh, thought I'd mention that. But just when you thought the installation was done and it's going to take you to the desktop, there's a little more to it. Because if we wait a few minutes here, in a second, we're going to see something that was never that you don't see in any other version of Windows but Vista. So let's just wait it out and see if it'll come up. There we go. So now it says it to wait while it checks your computer's performance. This is a feature or a process, I guess I should say, that does not occur in any other version of Windows except Windows Vista. Basically, what this is doing is many people thought this is where it gathers the information for your WEI, or if you remember what that stands for, it stands for Windows Experience Index. That's the uh, in Windows Vista and 7, and Windows 8 without 8.1. If you go to the system properties, you'll see a rating based on your computer's hardware. And many people thought that Windows checking your computer's performance was to obtain that Windows Experience Index rating. The awful sad truth is, it's actually not. Uh, this is actually just a very pointless screen that just, see, that just gathers information about your hardware so that the welcome center can prob can bleh, so that the welcome center can pro prob Jesus Christ the welcome center can properly there we go display your comp information about your computer so and this usually doesn't take a whole a really long time but yeah, on physical, in a VM at least it doesn't. On physical hardware though, it's probably going to take a little longer. So I'll go ahead and cut here, and I'll come back when we're getting ready to get to the desktop. Alright, so here's the final product. We got all the drivers installed. Touchscreen drivers working too. You can see it's Windows Vista Home Basic with no service packs, so that means we're going to have a lot of updates, and I can already see down in the notification area, the Windows Update icon, so 
There's probably going to be like 10,000 updates to install. It actually rated the computer. It got a 2.0 WEI. So let's go ahead and check out what that's for. I'm not surprised, but it's probably for the gaming graphics. Yep, gaming graphics got a 2.0. 2.7 for the CPU, not surprised. 4. Point um, no thanks. No thanks. Uh, 4.3 for the RAM. 2.0 for graphics, 2.4 for gaming graphics. I don't know how it got a better score for gaming graphics than for regular graphics. It says Windows Arrow, but this is Vista Home Basic, which doesn't even have Arrow. And a 3.4 for the disc. So you can see here are the specifications. Intel Core Solo U1400 at 1.2 gigahertz, 1 gigabyte of RAM, although it's only showing 1014 megabytes there. 32-bit OS and everything else. So yeah, overall this installation went pretty well, um, and yeah, it's already downloading updates, would you look at that. Now the next project is going to be to get the default gateway problem fixed, because none of my Windows clients are able to get the default gateway automatically, I have to keep manually specifying it, so, but we'll figure that out. Anyways, until next time, I'll see you guys then. So a little update on the... Windows Vista installation. As you can see now, I have installed both service packs. And um, after updating the video driver, the experience index went up to a 2.3 from I think it was a 2.0 before. This is uh, about a week later after the upgrade. And I can see now why Microsoft was sued. As you can see, it took an unusually long time to minimize that window there. I can see why Microsoft was sued over this sticker right here that says Windows Vista Capable. Because to briefly describe what that meant back in 2006 was that the computer was capable of running Windows Vista, but the catch was it was just for the Home Basic Edition, but that's the edition I installed on here. And it can barely run the Home Basic Edition. I was going through blue screens of death after blue screen of, blue screen of death after blue screen of death before with this thing so this is before I installed the service packs of course and then it started having some overheating issues but and you can see I've now enabled the classic theme I've disabled the partial arrow theme and uh, disabled the sidebar but even with that the computer is still unusable um, now, I could, it could just be because the, of overheating. I have This computer did have an overheating issue, but it's been on for only about a couple minutes now, and it's already unusable. Um, as you can see, I can't even move the mouse. So, I'm probably going to end up downgrading this thing back to Windows XP for the sake of it being unusable but if I put it in my lap here, it makes it even less usable. So, yep, it's probably going to get... Yep. You can see it is completely crashed again. So, and it's just going to go to a blue screen of death eventually, so I'll just go ahead and put it out of its misery. So now I have to restart again, and you can but you can clearly see that Windows Vista did not work out on this laptop. Um... And it is clearly not Windows Vista capable, as that sticker suggests. Even with Service Pack 2 installed, and you're watching me in the through the, my reflection in the screen say that. So I'll just go ahead and film the boot up here. And, uh... Yeah, we'll see, um... We'll see exactly what happens when it boots back into Windows. And mind you, this has not this computer has been turned on. It's been turned off for a couple days now. And I just turned it on this morning. It, before I started recording, it was on for about two minutes. And it already crashed.
And this is Vista with both service packs installed. This is not the original Vista with no service packs installation. Alright, we're back at the desktop. It takes a lot longer to load up, to completely load the desktop than it did when it had XP on it. Even with the sidebar disabled and the classic theme enabled. You might be able to hear the little fan going in there. Alright, I think we're just about loaded here, so let's try the pen again. And for those of you who say that Windows Vista Home Basic has no tablet PC support, it actually does, because if we go to hardware and sound here, this is kind of tricky to do with just one hand, but if we go to the hardware and sound, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see it does have pen support and tablet PC settings. So there is tablet support in Home Basic. It's just very limited. Um, let's zoom back out here. Come on. There we go. But yeah, so that's probably why I'm going to downgrade this back to Windows XP, but it's pretty obvious now that when Microsoft said a PC was Vista, or when the manufacturer said a PC was Vista capable, this one truly is not Vista capable. It can't even run the basic edition without crashing. Now that doesn't mean I hate Windows Vista. It just means that I can see why Microsoft was sued over the Vista capable uh, dilemma because PCs like this should net should not be running Vista. They should be running XP. Um, I guess I could try Windows 7 on here, but with only one gigabyte of RAM, that's probably not going to go so well if it can't even run Vista Home Basic Edition, so. But, there might be more videos on this computer, but for now, we'll just go ahead and leave it at that.